Hi, it's me again. I'm Uwe Diegel and I'm here to talk to you about the transport of another kind of medication, which is the transport of growth hormones. I remind you I work for MedActive and MedActive is the world's largest provider of solutions for the transport and storage of thermosensitive medication. I know that sounds grand, but it's actually quite a cool and interesting subject. Um, growth hormones uh, the people who use them know that they're particularly fragile, always have to be kept between 2 and 8 degrees, which is pretty difficult when you're trying to travel, when you have kids and you're trying to go to the Mediterranean, to Club Med or to something like that, to keep the medication always between 2 to 8 degrees, because it basically means that you have to walk around with ice packs, with suit, special suitcases, and you have to ask the airplane to please keep your growth hormones for you. It's generally a pain. So we set about to find some new solutions for that to make the life simpler for you. Um, incidentally, a lot of people have written to me to ask me who made that beautiful painting right behind me. It was made by my friend Kasia Erpa, and that's just to answer your future questions. She's a fr painter friend of mine in Paris. All right, let's get back to growth hormones. Um, there's, two there's two solutions for transporting growth hormones. They have to be kept between two to eight degrees, they're very fragile, although between you and me, they do withstand an interruption of the cold chain for up to 48 hours, just as long as you don't go higher than 16 degrees. What I mean is that, all right, I'm using this as an example, which is a Norditropin pen from Novo Nordisk. If, for instance, you accidentally let it go at 9 degrees, it does not mean that your growth hormone is dead. It just means you have to be a little bit more careful. It can go up to 16 degrees without any major side effect, all right? Of course, it's always better to keep it between 2 to 8, but I mean, don't throw it away if it goes up 1 degree for, for half an hour. That really doesn't make any difference. Uh, all right, keeping it between 2 to 8, pretty tricky, but some simple solutions. Now, the first solution I'm going to show you is a traditional solution, which is basically... Uh, an isothermic bag with some ice cube, I mean an ice pack inside. An ice pack traditionally is made with uh, water and antifreeze and it's got two defects. One is that it only lasts for about four to five hours. It stays frozen for only about maximum five hours. And secondly is that it, there's condensation. It sweats when it defrosts, which means that everything inside your bag is getting all wet and disgusting. And that is trust me, really, really irritating when you're traveling. So what we've done, we've made a new series of bags called iCool. Now iCool, I'm telling you, I didn't reinvent the wheel. All we did is we made the wheel a bit rounder. We just made the thing work better. So first thing, let's look at the ice pack, all right? Now this is our answer to an ice pack. Not only does it look totally cool, excuse the pun, but at the same time, this is made with a specially formulated polymer which is, uh, uh, stays frozen for 11 hours. So it stays frozen twice as long as a normal ice pack, which is quite amazing. And secondly, you see this beautiful blue color and it feels so nice and soft to the hand? That's PVC. I put a layer of PVC around them and that stops it from sweating or from condensating, which means that even while this is defrosting at any temperature, it will always stay dry. Now that is amazing. Apart from that, the eye cools are standard bags. You just open it up, there's a special compartment to put the nice, the beautiful ice pack, and you put it inside, all right? And now this pack has got aluminum sewn into the sides to keep it co colder, or to keep it insulated for longer. You put your growth hormones right here, in the same place where you put the ice pack, but as you see, because it's in a special pocket, you don't touch the ice pack directly. So you can put all your growth hormones, I have three here, Norditropin pens, or I have the Nutropinac pen from Ibsen, they're all the same in terms of conservation. And you put it inside, you close it, all right, and underneath you have another compartment where you can put all your other crap. I mean, all the stuff that you use when you're traveling. Look, all medication benefits from being kept cooler anyway. So you can put, use this as a toiletry bag, just put all your stuff inside. Use your, put your lipstick, your, whatever it is that you want to put inside. Just put your growth hormones in the top compartment and in the bottom you can put all your other stuff that you use when you're traveling. Right? So this is called the iCool. Now it comes in two different forms. It comes either as the iCool Weekender, which is 
you know, a cute handy little bag. You can also hang it onto your belt here, which is quite useful. It looks more like a camera bag than anything else. They don't look medical at all, which is really nice. I mean, they look just like normal little handy bags. And then we have what we call the Prestige, which is a different format, which is much bigger. Now, from the point of view of growth hormones, there's only one important difference. This one will keep it cold between uh, 2 to 8 for 12 hours, and this will keep it between 2 to 8 for 24 hours, because, as you will see, I've put a double ice pack. So there's an ice pack on this side, there's an ice pack on this side, and that really is amazing. It keeps it between 2 to 8 degrees for 24 hours. So when you're taking the plane to go to Australia, or when you're going to a long trip, again, remember, when you're taking the plane, you also have to consider the 2 3 hours before the you leave, the 2 3 hours after you leave, by the time you go to the airport, have the full body cavity search for an hour before, and I mean, all of that takes time. So you have the time of the flight, plus the time you before the airport and after the airport. So this one is good for 24 hours. In fact, it's 25 hours, but it's a lot easier for us to sell them in slices of 12 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. But the fact that it gives you 25 hours between 2 to 8 degrees. So that is the first solution, what we call the eye cool. And as you know, see this my logo here was a little man stepping out of the circle. Freedom. Eye cool. Now I'm going to show you the second solution. And again, there's not one solution that's better than another solution. It purely depends on your circumstances. Depending, maybe you're taking a long trip in a car, maybe you're going to a hotel, maybe one solution is better than another. It really is just a personal preference thing. So the second solution I'm going to show you is quite cool. Now, a few years ago, I had a problem in my family is because one of my brothers went to a hotel and he had his medication frozen by the guy, the innkeeper. All right, he didn't speak the language, he tried to explain, put his medication, and that moron put it in the freezer. So as a response to this, we started this. We started making the Medi fridge, which is the world's smallest fridge. Now the world's smallest fridge, the Medi fridge, plugs either into the cigarette lighter of the car, or you can plug it into the uh, electricity of your house. So it's delivered with all the cables that you need to, in fact, transport, uh, to plug it anywhere you want in the world. It's a universal adapter, so you can we use it in the United States, New Zealand, Europe, it doesn't make any difference. 110 to 240 volts. Now, generally, when you travel with growth hormones, you only have one pen, and you have the little capsules, the little refills for the pen. So this is perfect for that. So you just open it up, there's a little bit of protection, but this basically a waste of time, all right, it just makes you feel good. All right, then you put your medication inside your pen and you can put about 10 capsules. I don't think you'll ever need 10, most, most people travel with one or two capsules, but if you want to, you can put up to 10. And then you close it, and there you are, and, it, and you plug it in, it takes about 15 minutes for it to get to the right temperature, and the temperature will be displayed permanently in the front here. Now, I have one of these in my car, and I must tell you, I hardly ever take it out of the car. Okay, it's plugged permanently. I start the car, it starts the fridge, it's under the seat of the car. It is, for traveling in a car on a long distance trip, the best thing you can imagine. Apart from that, I don't really bother taking it out when I go to a hotel, because in the hotel, most of the time, they have a fridge in the room. So, 99% of the time, I just leave it plugged in permanently in the car. All right? So, that's basically uh, the, the, the best solution, the best electronic solution. Again, what I said earlier, there's not one solution that's better than another. It depends on what you want to do, what kind of trip you want to do. So, what I've done, started doing now recently is putting together kits. So, what I've done here now, if you take these two products and you go to my website, it's medactive.com, so www.medactive, M E D I C, sorry again, www.medactive.com, medactive.com. And you go under the thing called travel kits. And on the travel kit, I put the two products together and they come much cheaper to buy together because with the two products, you're basically covered for any situation anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter whether you're doing bicycle, doing car trips, boat, whatever it is. If you have both of these, you can go anywhere you want. All right. Well, that's about it for growth hormones. I uh, hope I've answered any questions you have. If you have any more, please don't hesitate to send me an email at udiegel, U-D-I-E-G-E-L, at medactive.com. I, I hope you have a wonderful day and have many more travels using your growth hormones. Bye.